There's a lot of people wouldn't have, they wouldn't know they were in Rome that night. But uh, I don't, I don't regret that. I, I wanted to savor every, every moment of, of that occasion and that. And, uh, you know, inwardly I was drunk, but I didn't take a drink for the simple reason I just wanted to savor every moment. I was to learn what it's like bringing a trophy home from Europe. The scenes when you arrive back are unbelievable. Elation, local pride, it's all on display. Let's face it, this game's all about the fans. Not enough of our lot remember that. But Bob always did. And there is Bob Paisley with the European Cup. Welcome home, Liverpool. Emlyn Hughes, the skipper, with him. The rate of unemployment in this country is a disgrace. And on Merseyside, it's appalling. That's why Liverpool are struggling for support like the rest of us. As a young man in the North East, Bob worked at the top of a mine and on a building site. He could identify with the fans and the respect was mutual. Those lucky enough still to have a job at a local car factory even had a close-up of the European Cup. Liverpool's my adopted city now, and the my type of people are so humorous. They laugh at some you know, their own mistakes or something like that. At the end of the day, if it's provided a little bit of happiness for these people, you know, it, it, I'm satisfied with that. It's, uh, you know. It doesn't pay anybody to be deceived by the expression on Bob's face. Sometimes his smile is genuine. Sometimes it hides his true nature. He's as hard as nails and as crafty as they come. But his planning has been generally faultless and he's deserved every bit of luck he's got. After we delayed him for two years by our triumphs at Forest, Bob went to Paris and completed a hat-trick in the European Cup. Back home, Bob was as greedy as ever. Only Forrest and Villa have come between him and the first division title since 1976. But it's not just that Liverpool have continued to win trophies. That's impressive enough. It's the way they've done it. In 1979, for example, they won the league title with a record 68 points and conceded only 16 goals the fewest in the history of the First Division. The following year, they completed a record run of 59 home games without defeat. It goes on and on and on, attracting envy and admiration throughout the game and from every one of us. I think he will go down in, in time as the greatest manager of all time. I don't think, even though he's won more than anything at this moment in time, that's been fully appreciated. I think in uh, two or three years' time, uh, people will look back and to look at all the greats of the game and they were, he'll, he'll stand out on his own. Well, Bob was in his last season when I came here as a player. Um, I don't think he's changed over the years. He's always been a solid, down-to-earth, common-sense sort of fella. Um, I think it would do anybody good to uh, spend a couple of years here um, and perhaps we'd have uh, better footballers and a better football league at the end of it. Canniness in Yorkshire is carefulness. Canniness in the North East is niceness. Canny lad is a nice lad uh, in the northeast, and that's what he is. And I remember saying once when he got the OBE, that used to stand for other buggers' efforts, but uh, in his case, it stands for our Bob excels. So much praise. So why then didn't Bob become the England team manager? It was a job I would have loved, but I said it should have been offered to him before Ron Greenwood, because Bob knew more about football. The fact is, Bob didn't want the England job. For one thing, he considered himself too old. For another, it would have meant performing for the media. He made sure he didn't have that pressure. I think it's, it, it's a specialist job and uh, a little bit more, uh, you've got to be a bit more of a diplomat and, uh, and well versed in uh, giving uh, things off to, I mean, so easy to get misinterpreted in England, let alone in a foreign country and that. And uh, I think you've got to have that gift too. And uh, if there's one thing I preach is knowing your strengths and weaknesses. And uh, I would have been going into a place where I might have been uh, caught out, 
you know, from a verbal point of view. Only bad managers need to talk a lot on television. The hardest part for Bob was at 20 to 5 on a Saturday when he had to deal with the media. But he was able to use his success as a shield. Some say Bob is narrow-minded. Most managers have minds like tunnels. In Bob's case, it's a wedge. Bill Shankly was much the same, you know. But Bill was larger than life. Bob, well, he's a bit of an introvert. And he never won any prizes for public speaking. We won a lot of trophies and, and as a captain at the school, I had to speak. And, but I, I know the speech now. I'm glad to have won the cup as an honour to Appleton School. And, uh, and, and, you know, and, but that was the sum total of it. And, uh, I was glad to say that. And, uh, and I would have been prepared just to say that on every other trophy that I've won. When I saw Bob, he usually had a small sherry. And he talked about horses with my sidekick, Peter Taylor. That probably suited him better. It's long been his second sporting love, but it left me out in the cold. I don't know one end of a horse from the other. As a club, Liverpool have never totally reflected Bill Shankly's warmth, nor the warmth of Bob, Joe, Ronnie and Roy. It's as if the club want to keep their secrets safe. You know, Bob was always cautious. I learned my lesson. I had two or three quotes and then I thought, you shouldn't have said that, really, because it didn't do the team any good. When the Saturday print, the, the Sunday print comes in after a Saturday's game and that, and, and it's in black and white, uh, uh, Jesse, you, the, the wife used to say, you know, you didn't say that. I said, well, I did, but it, I didn't mean it sort of that way. And, and it's so different when it goes down in black and white. At the end of the day, I turned round and said, I hope that the teams that I can produce can help me get over the, the verbal side of it. And, uh, and in fairness, I think they've done that. The amazing consistency of his team certainly has spoken volumes. Bob finally claimed the League Cup, and his skipper Phil Thompson collected it after they won the replayed final 2-1 against West Ham in 1981. The following year, Ronnie Whelan's goal sent the game against Spurs into extra time. Dalgleish couldn't get to it, but he might get to this. Villa going in there, using his shoulder. Johnson playing it in. Whelan! And Bob used the breather to full advantage. Just you see how he refuses to let his players lie down. Now that's management. Of course they were tired, but the players weren't allowed to think about it. And I'll tell you what, Spurs weren't allowed to see it. And now it's Dalglish, he's onside. Is this the decisive moment? He's played for Whelan, and he's done it again. The match winner was Whelan. Yet another example of how Liverpool have kept the conveyor belt moving. It was this young man again who scored the winner in the final against Manchester United last March. 